there's been a big recent hydrogen announcement from Toyota. And I don't know about you, but I am getting kind of sick of assholes greenwashing hydrogen as the next big mobility solution. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. When I say assholes, I'm actually talking about ex-lawyer government minister assholes and corporate wonk assholes and Liberty with the Truth special interest group asshole organizations. Hydrogen is the ultimate energy carrier that can supply the future clean energy needs of Australia. It's not an energy carrier, it's a friggin' fuel. You manufacture it, you know, you tip it in your car and you oxidize the shit out of it. And I know that's a dirty word, fuel. Sorry. Hydrogen Mobility Australia's vision is a hydrogen society built upon clean and renewable energy technology, including hydrogen powered transport. This bullshit greenwashing just has to stop, in my view. It's undignified. Elephant in the room alert. The objectives of Hydrogen Mobility Australia are to accelerate the commercialization of new hydrogen and fuel cell technologies for transport, export, storage, and stationary applications in Australia. Notice how conveniently they decline to mention manufacturing hydrogen gas. Hold that thought, we're getting there. Hydrogen Mobility Australia apparently also just got down on its knees metaphorically, to welcome as a member of its fine organisation none other than Origin Energy. That's right. The same Origin Energy that recently endured a shareholder revolt at its most recent AGM, with 46% of its own shareholders demanded that the company report the extent to which it supported lobby groups whose mission is to obstruct action on climate change. Hashtag assholes. Shareholders, right? They did this of Origin Energy. Just Google it. It's fascinating. I'd suggest that welcoming Origin Energy into hydrogen mobility Australia would be like putting Hannibal friggin' Lecter in charge of a maternity ward. Anyway, apparently anyone can join this particular group, but Probably not me, at least not after this report. Here's a barometer, however, of the ambient level of scientific literacy in society, perhaps, whenever I use the H word in a report such as this. If your annoying British accent, dot dot dot, thank you for your bullshit video, dot 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 dot, spoiler alert, dot dot, People have ran engines using only hydrogen, oh crikey mate, you must be paid to make this shit, dot dot. Well thank you very much for that considered view, Jesus. It's, it's terrible when the education system leaves anyone behind. Sorry about my annoying British accent too, you're only 17,000 kilometres off the target there, a minor miscalculation. Well done, however, and God save the Queen. You found the keyboard, son, and that's the main thing. Sometimes that's all it takes. A Toyota is moving and shaking on hydrogen, having just reached up the skirt of various media outlets only two weeks ago after committing to put a fairly small electrolyzer connected to a glorified garden tap on the roof of its old car factory in Altona in southeastern Schittsville. This is a $4 million spend for them, allegedly augmented by $3 million bucks from another group of ace clean energy bullshitters, the Australian Renewable Energy Association, or Tina Arena. At least Arena. Pro tip there, right? Get a new branding consultant because meaningless acronyms just erode credibility off the bat, I'd suggest. Toyota, straight up. President and CEO Matt Callahor. 
11.5 to 12.1 out of a possible 10 there as a bullshitter, in my view, is reported to have said, incredibly enough. Right now, the biggest factor to the success of hydrogen being widely available is the lack of infrastructure. The sooner we move to a zero emissions society, the better, and Toyota is committed to making this a reality. Is it really? Well, let me stop you right there, big cheese of Toyota Oz. How exactly does the sale of 14,000 V8 diesel Land Cruiser 200s and 19,000 big belching Prados fit into this alleged zero emissions reality commitment of yours? Riddle me that, you greenwashing bullshitter. Personal opinion. How can you even claim that with a straight friggin' face? Also, inconveniently, as a point of fact, the biggest factor to the success of hydrogen in the context of achieving this so-called commitment to a zero emissions society. I mean, it just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? But the biggest impediment is how friggin' filthy hydrogen gas actually is to produce. And I say this because I am an engineer and personal opinion, Toyota's CEO is a corporate wonk whose main mission is to sell cars and not be a green evangelist. Because those two assignments, selling land cruisers and green evangelism, are mutually exclusive engagements in the real world. So let us get a few things straight, okay? Hydrogen is manufactured as an industrial product. They use it in the manufacture of glass for flat screens and for sintering metallic parts together. It's also a common fertilizer base when you mix it with nitrogen and they use it in textiles and plastics and foam and stuff like that. And liquefied, let's not forget, but this is hard to do, it's not a bad rocket fuel if you can find the right oxidizer. Not bad at all. The point here is, you typically use hydrogen because you need hydrogen for its chemical properties. So you make hydrogen because you specifically need hydrogen. This is not the approach when you just need fuel. You make fuel because you need energy. Big difference. 96% of the world's hydrogen is manufactured directly from hydrocarbons. 96%. And those hydrocarbons on the input side are simply better fuels than the hydrogen that results from the processing. See, to do this, they take, say, methane gas, and they pump in a bunch of energy, they decompose it in superheated steam, and they collect the hydrogen. And also, inconveniently enough, they throw away tons of CO2 as a waste product because CO2 is the other salient output of the conventional hydrogen production process. A lot of people, well, they just gloss over that, conveniently enough. Claire Johnson, the CEO of Hydrogen Mobility Australia, we're not sleeping with Origin Energy, we're just really good friends, is reported to have said in relation to the Toyota hydrogen announcement. We need governments to come on board and support the growth of zero emission vehicles in Australia, including introducing vehicle emissions regulation and coordinating infrastructure. Really, zero emissions. The problem with conventional hydrogen production in the context of transportation is, well, there's a couple of problems, really. Number one, you are emitting a shitload of CO2. So they're hardly zero emission vehicles if you scale up the number of these things on the road to the extent that there are hundreds of thousands of hydrogen vehicles actually out there turning and burning. Even though they don't really burn, they oxidise. CO2 is not coming out of the tailpipe, certainly, but it is absolutely erupting from the hydrogen factory. It is intrinsic to the process and it cannot be subverted. Despite the press releases from greenwashing hydrogen assholes, this is an inescapable truth. Number two, right? The second law of thermodynamics. However much energy you start with in your methane and the other inputs going into the hydrogen factory, you get less energy in the hydrogen you produce. This cannot be subverted either.
The upshot of this is, of course, that you would be better off just burning the friggin' methane in the cars. Because the applied science engineering application of the second law of thermodynamics for dummies is he who uses the fewest processes to get the end result wins. And by wins, right, I mean loses less energy along the way. The steam reforming of methane, right, with all the possible industrial efficiency tweaks means that you are going to lose about 30% of the energy on the way through the factory. And you can take this up with God. She's the one who made this absurd provision in the design of the universe. But I guess it also did give us the arrow of time. So there's that. A bit of a compromise. Good news even for Tag Heuer, I suppose. But kind of sucky for the producers of everything else. Hyundai Australia has had a hydrogen refueler out the back of its head office in Sydney for several years. It is one of the most glamorous backyard sheds that I have ever seen. And inside it are cylinders full of high pressure hydrogen, almost certainly made from methane. I mean, if you ring up BOC Gases or the Lind Group or something, whoever, and you order a cylinder of hydrogen gas... There's no green option. It's about as green as a barrel of crude friggin' oil. The facts about hydrogen, so inconvenient. I'd suggest it would be far greener and a lot more energy efficient, not to mention far less challenging technically, just to release a fleet of cars powered by compressed natural gas, which we have shitloads of in Australia. So it would also be pretty damn fine for our appalling national energy security. So there's that. And before you say, bastard industry making filthy hydrogen, assholes, the reason that hydrogen gas is manufactured in this comparatively filthy energy intensive way is cost. You need natural gas and some water for the steam and coal for a bit of heat. It's all dirt cheap. Even if you use an electrolyzer, okay, in the manner of Toyota and its recent gab fest, about 30% of the electrical energy is going to be lost to inefficiency slash second law of thermodynamics. That's just how it is. Therefore, they would be better off just plugging the power they produce into a whole bunch of EVs or pumping it into the grid and shutting down a coal-fired power station or two. That would be greener especially in Victoria, let's face it. If we passed a law to outlaw methane to hydrogen production and tomorrow we made photovoltaic electricity to pump all of that into a polymer electrolyte membrane electrolyzer, which would be the best available tech, the hydrogen is absolutely going to be more expensive. And therefore, so is your new flat screen TV, your scented mechanical widget, your electronic whatever, and your food grown with hydrogen-based fertilizer. So you'd best brace for impact here and get set to suck up that additional cost, I'd suggest. And this is the confronting reality of actually going green. People's actual green enthusiasm tends to wane dramatically when zero emissions whatever also involves paying substantially more for everything. And don't get me wrong, climate change is real. There's no doubt humanity is causing it. We need real solutions as a priority. It's going to cost more than the status quo. And giving bullshit green evangelizers airtime on this simply does not help. You're going to be hearing a lot more about hydrogen over the next few years. That's a done deal. So it's important for you, in my view, to be able to perform efficient, Bullshit fact separation, okay? It just is. If it's a corporate wonk or a government asshole in front of a camera or a microphone and they're spruiking hydrogen, it's pretty safe to assume what they're saying is probably bullshit. In the immortal words of list builder Bon Scott, concrete shoes, cyanide, TNT, neckties, contracts, high voltage and hydrogen. Let's not forget that. It's a dirty deed done dirt cheap. I hope this helps. 